So for the last little while, especially in the colder months, I noticed that the differential on the Blue Mach 1 has been leaking. Turns out it's the pinion seal, which is harder to replace than just the diff cover if that's what was leaking. And I think really the car probably has this leak because the car has sat for a very long time over the years. I usually get less than a thousand miles of driving out of it every year, so I think that's the reason. Um, but anyway, this is common, um, and so I, I got under here to check it out a little bit better, and you can see this is where the oil is coming out, right there, where the pinion seal is. So um, I ordered a new pinion seal, and my friend uh, actually lent me an extra pinion seal in case I needed it, and so I wanted to compare the two. They are different part numbers, which is really interesting. This is the one my friend had. It might be a little bit older than this one. This is the one I bought. Part numbers are different, but um, I find that interesting that the part numbers would be different because uh, 79 to like 2014 all have the same seal. And I went to the Ford dealer and I made sure to get a, a brand new pinion nut as well. And I wasn't really going to do this, but I decided to and I'm glad I did. There's the part number. So uh, I took the red terminator for a nice drive and picked up that new nut. And I did mark the old nut when I took it off and I wanted to mark the new one so that they matched. And it did turn out that if you compare them, there's a marking on the actual nut and you can see the marking that LL or the it looks like it's actually an F. It's actually on the exact same side as where I marked it when I took it off. And so that to me, I thought that was going to be a perfect match, but it didn't turn out. It's 180 degrees off from when I tightened it down. This is the pinion seal driver uh, tool. and I'm going to show more about how this works, but I did borrow this from my friend as well. And it's a really nice tool because it holds the seal on there just right, and it also spreads the inner spring and keeps it uh, tight when you pound the new one in. So I like that because my friend was telling me that the little spring in there can get damaged if you just try to tap it in. So this tool was really nice. I'm very grateful that he let me borrow this. And I'll have the part number and everything on this in a second. I'm going to show you up close a little more how I put it on. So I did um, take the nut off and I tapped the old flange off. It came pretty easy. And what I thought was a shim and the rear bearing actually would slide off the shaft, off the pinion, and uh, try to come out. So that was something that I was a little bit alarmed about. I didn't see that before. So I just thought, well, I guess that's okay. And I called my master tech friend who's lent me these tools. He's the one that has the Sonic Blue Terminator. And I trust his judgment. He said, oh, that's fine. It's probably an oil slinger, not a shim. And the bearing just coming off the pinion, it's fine. Just put it all back together. So I did. So. Here's just a little video of me in there. You can see I also took the drive shaft and I tied it to the exhaust uh, so that it wouldn't be dangling there. I didn't want it to come out and leak transmission fluid up by the transmission. So anyway, just pounded that in and it drove it in nice and straight. And I did not use any extra RTV on this. Some people do, but that's just what I chose to do and it's turned out great. So now you can see I added the fluid to the point where it was coming out and now it's all finished. So let me show you how this tool works. Here is the tool and you know what the part number on the tool is. So if you want to slow that down you can look that up. And um, what I like about this is this is the old seal and uh, it's pretty damaged from pulling it out. But for demonstration purposes you can see that it didn't really fit around the rim until you pried it on there and some grease would squeeze out of it because they come pre-greased and everything and so I didn't want to damage that rubber seal there's the metal spring it came out when I took this out with the tool and I'll show you the tool I used to get it out but anyway it goes in there and this tool helps keep that spring depressed so pounded it in and it worked just great and it bottoms out nicely and so you know it's all the way in so I like that this is the other tool and uh, here's a part number on it if you want to check that out. I believe it, yeah, it's a Mac Tools 
product. And this is really just kind of a hook. And once you have the pinion nut off and the flange off, you can just stick this in and just pop out the old seal. And so that worked nicely. Like I said, I got a little aggressive with it, made sure I didn't mar up the casing of the differential. And this tool I didn't end up needing to use because my parking brake held really well, but this is another tool that he lent me that you can put two of the um, the flange nuts through on the side of the differential and it holds it still while you torque down. And speaking of that, you can see I used a big half inch drive socket and then I did go back with a breaker bar and I got it in there real nice and tight. Uh, you don't want to mess up the preload and I was really worried about this but my friend assured me that you could crank it down pretty tight and not crush the crush sleeve that's in there anymore uh, very easily like unless I was super trying to tw torque this thing down and so I did it um, to get the nut on like this and that new nut does have the Loctite on it that comes from the factory that way and my friend was also uh, informing me that the nut is kind of a one-use nut so it's used to kind of taper down and it'll tighten and then it's not going to come off as easy so uh, I just wanted to share that um, this is how I did it and I've seen other people do it this way instead of pulling out the whole carrier and everything but I did go back and um, tighten it down with a breaker bar pretty good and it feels good so I just wanted to show how nice this axle is. The car has 90,000 miles on it, but it's a desert car. All the markings are still on it, all the paint marks. I think that's pretty cool to see, especially if you watch graveyard cars and a lot of things like that, and you really appreciate all the documentation on these cars. Still the paper tag on there. But I am excited to get this all back together and get the car on the ground. It's been up like this with the nose down for a couple weeks, and... It was one of those projects that I wasn't really super excited about doing and it was kind of scary to do because you don't want to mess up your gears and everything if you do it wrong. But anyway, finally got the car back on the ground. Now it's time to test drive it and enjoy. See how dusty this car is from sitting. Definitely needs a bath now. But let's go make sure there's no gear wine noises. So it sounds pretty good. I don't hear any howling of coyotes, is what they call it, where the differential whines on D cell or on acceleration because the pinion is um, not set in right with the correct preload and everything so uh, it sounds good so so far so good and uh, I'm really happy that the car doesn't leak I took it for a nice drive and I've gone out and checked on it a few times looked underneath there totally dry it's exactly what I wanted so thanks for watching it's just a nice little update on the blue Mach one and stay tuned for more Mustang content